That's all I wanted. They give us, they're giving us the opportunity to do like interviews. And I was like, I'm not going to do an interview until the second day because I haven't touched the game yet. I haven't touched it at all. So I was like, I kind of want to like play the game before I do an interview. But it sounds like they sort of assumed that it would be the case that you would want to spend a day like playing it. So they knew that was going to happen. Yeah. So please take your seats. I got this. Grab that. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. Look how like sick that is, and it's got the like Witcher logo. Wait, they gave that, that swag? Yeah, this is the swag bag. So it's got like a bunch of shirts in here and stuff, and it's got like the soundtrack, and it's got a big section to like put your laptop in. I kind of want to just transfer everything over to this bag. <laughs> there are two shirts. One of them looks normal, and then there's this one that looks like it could fit three of me inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently we're gonna play like, they're gonna give us like eight hours to play this game in total, which is pretty awesome. So it'll be in like big chunks, we'll be able to get like a really good idea of what the game is like. I'm down. I'm excited. A crow went through a guy's brain, so I'm down with that. So yeah, so I'm like... I've done a few side quests. I'm currently working on like the main quest. Aw, this guy's nice. This is actually a dating sim, a really elaborate one. <laughs> Basically like I'm walking around an inn asking a bunch of questions about a person I'm looking for and everybody so far has been like, get out of here, trash. <laughs> and I'm like, aw. And this guy's like, here, sit down, have a drink, let's be friends. And I'm like, aw, this guy. This peasant woman keeps like hawking loogies. No, like I can walk next to the hens, but it doesn't give me an option to like pick them up. I can just like walk near them and make them uncomfortable. I love you. I love you, chicken. There are wild dogs all over the place, so like if I use my witcher abilities, you can like hear where enemies are. And whenever I use my ability and I see that there's just like a ton of things, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> First time was good. Uh, like I said, I had some, some combat problems, but it's really fun so far. Uh, the story has been interesting, and I really, I actually am super okay with how many cutscenes there have been so far, just because the story is really, really cool, and they incorporate enough action in there where I don't feel like, you know, I've just been sitting, I feel like really engaged, but now I get to eat. Super jazz. Beautiful. Salsa. There's salsa on the bottom. It's like pretty good actually. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, day two of our Poland adventure. Uh, we get to play Witcher 3 again today. Right now we're still in the hotel. This is like the bar. But yesterday, yesterday was really fun. I got to play a lot of the game, and I guess I got, I got pretty far in the story. Like the story really. It grabbed my attention, so I just kept plowing forward with the story, but now I'm, I'm a little under-leveled for it. So, to go back into the game, I'm gonna be like, whoops, all right, let's backtrack a little bit. But yeah, should be fun. I saved in a place that I'm not excited to go back to. <laughs> my sword broke, my silver sword broke, so I'm not excited to hop back in and try to get out of that area. I think I'm like almost done with it, but... I'm going on a tour. <laughs> so yeah, these are there are paper birds on the window. Looks like, that looks like kind of like the power of the great map. The statuette. Recording, okay. but you can see a lot of stuff going gotcha. on. It's pretty awesome. Okay. No recording. <laughs> Go away. Do you hear that, Herchin? Yeah, we gotta put these down. <laughs> Just remember what it is. Putting classy stuff on the whiteboard. What are you talking about? Hi, I'm nice to meet you. <laughs> what are you doing? What do you mean? What, what are you doing over there? What are you talking about? Two girls walk into a room with the marker board. <laughs> oh my god, who drew that? That is, that is rude. Nice. That is so rude. God, who would, in a place of business? My goodness. <laughs> What is that, a rocket ship? I feel like we're on Willy Wonka. Well, I mean, like, we're like Charlie and his dad. And we're gonna be like, 
Yeah. Let's try yeah. dicks on your penis. Because that's yeah. what happened to them. Really <laughs> at the end, I walk away looking really sad, and they're like, no, wait. I was just waiting for someone to draw a dick, and you did it. I don't know. Storage. <laughs> it looks like lots of boxes. I think that's the end of the tour. We're back where we were. Sweet Gerald. <laughs> Alright, hey guys, I'm Miles Toss and I'm a level designer on Witcher Wild Hunt. Yeah. The game you've been playing. The game I've been playing that I super, super love. I haven't played the first one and the second one very much at all. That's perfect. I'm coming yeah, I'm coming into it as kind of like a blank slate. Uh, whereas obviously like people like Jesse know everything <laughs> about the Witcher franchise in its entirety. I would feel very comfortable going home and saying that people who haven't played the first two could definitely play this one. That's excellent. Yeah. That's really good. We try really hard to make it so because, yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to, like, building off of that, I wanted to ask, like, um, is that something you guys have been super worried about? Like, making sure that, that the game could be approached from, you know, lots of yeah, different people? I mean, the most obvious one would be that now, for the first time, we're actually going PS4, right? Um, right. Which are neither Witcher 1 nor Witcher 2 were on the PS4. For the Xbox, you at least had the second game uh, accessible to that crowd. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, we yeah we were expecting many newcomers to the franchise because it has just grown to yeah. these enormous proportions. And uh, so we were pretty much aware that now we had to kind of make this more accessible. And mm -hmm. for us, it was like this balancing line because we wanted to make it more accessible, sure, but we didn't want to alienate our, our fans, our, like, like right. Jesse or the other guys, totally. right? So and I feel like uh, we struck like a cool middle ground where people like you that have never played it before, they get eased in to the mm -hmm. world um, by various means. I can go into detail uh, uh, regarding that in a second. But on the other hand, you have like lots of uh, winks for people that have played the first two <laughs> games, or like even get it, yeah, exactly, <laughs> or even read the books. That starts, for example, one of the very first quests is called Lilac, Lilacs and Gooseberries. Yes, yes. Which is um, described from the books how Yennefer smells. Right. And you know, if you don't know it, it's just a quest name, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of learn that it somehow relates to Yennefer. Right. But people from the books got cool. I get that reference. Right. That's awesome. And. I guess that kind of describes how we, how our philosophy was with that. It should always feel like, all right, we want it to be inclusive for all the people that have uh, read the source material or played the previous games. But at the same time, we don't want to exclude everyone else. The writers on this, whoever is writing dialogue, like big, big props because yes. You're able to, to fit in a lot of exposition without it feeling forced, without it feeling like they're looking right at you and going, so here's what's going on, and here are these people, and this is what they do, right? It's just, it feels like it's so naturally put into conversation where you're like, oh, cool, like, I, I get what's going on now. Exactly. Because and it's, of that one little piece of dialogue. It's, it's a really cool way of doing it, I think, for the prologue specifically, where even if you ride along the village, you hear the people talking on the sides and mm -hmm. you pick up a comment here and there. The world in general uh, is just gorgeous as well. You know, like I, I actually, there were so many times where I was riding Roach, you know, from one place to the next, and I kept seeing, you know, the little symbols on the mini map that were like, hey, you should, hey, there's some there's some herbs here that you could grab. And I was like, ah, oh, they would just get off the horse and like go and run and get them. It was like so satisfying to grab herbs and like the way that all of that was set up. And actually I was overhearing that all of that plant life is actually based off of like plants that actually exist in yeah. Poland, right? Uh, not only in Poland, but like, they're actual real plants in a way. I mean, some of them have, <laughs> I don't think you can make those kind of potions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sick, if I have this flower and then this rock, but I can make something poisonous, guys. Yeah, it. we want to distance ourselves. Like, if you do that in real life and die, that is not, don't do it. <laughs> like so many warnings don't, before the don't game. Don't do like, it. Please no. In an open world game, it must be so hard to, to sort of capture that aspect of everything being alive and active. And uh, it feels that way when you're running around. Like the um, one thing that was for some reason sort of captivating when I was playing just a couple minutes ago was it was really windy at night and all of the trees were like moving with the wind and in different ways depending on what tree they were. And I was like, 
that looks super cool, you know? It, like you were saying, it's like that moment where I'm just like on my horse, like staring at trees, just like flowing. And I was like, are there any monsters or creatures that are based off of folklore here that people might be kind of surprised oh, or yes. actually based off of something? Absolutely. Like, um, you see this creature and go like, holy crap, what is that? How did they conceive this? of this? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And they, how do you even go up with that? And then you do some research, you ask these, the, the, our Polish uh, uh, colleagues, and they go like, no, this is like a story my grandma used to tell me to, you know, make <laughs> me go to bed or whatever, like these scary right. bedtime stories. And, uh, yeah, that's they the actually, sort of stuff that I was so curious. Everything that I met, like all the different creatures that I was fighting, aside from like wolves and dogs, yeah, obviously. Actually, it's like, it's like, are these based on something? They, they are. They are based on their mythology. And uh, sometimes, oddly enough, like you even think like, so someone in real life came up with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you find they have all these background stories. And uh, the funny thing is like these Polish people, like when they see a certain creature and the way Geralt deals with it, they will know like, yeah, that's totally how you're <laughs> that's supposed legit. to. That's so how you're supposed to deal with this kind of creature. Some of the rituals in the game, right? Yeah, exactly. Are also based off of exactly. real and, rituals. And for us, that's uh, for us in the West, it's really fresh. You go there mm -hmm. and like, oh, this ritual, okay, this is what I do, and this happens. Wow, I didn't know, you know. And that's how I feel like many of our monsters feel very fresh to not only us but also the Polish people. Mm -hmm. And and The Witcher in general is also based off of. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's based right? off a uh, novel series by uh, author Andrzej Sapkowski. There were a couple of quests that were, they were technically side quests, but they were so directly connected with what was, you know, really important that was going on, where I was like, wait, this was a side quest, right? Yep. <laughs> like, the, no there would be it. a lot to it, and it would be, you know, pretty long and expansive and add to, you know, your... Uh, Velocity. I don't think that's the right word, but like it would, it would, it would add something to the yeah, story. Yeah, definitely. Know. It's like, uh, and it enriches the world. Basically, the characters it bonds you to them or not, depending mm -hmm. on what, what with these, uh, without any given situation. So the scale is very like it's not just like side quest, main quest, and then you have small quest, like minor quests or something. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, it's very blurry in that way, and. Uh, this allows us to tell us so many, many different stories. Like you, you have them starting out as something that you might know, mm -hmm. uh, like some people call them fetch quests, right? Where you go like, uh, go grab me my chest, I, or my treasure chest. I lost it while I was doing whatever thing I was doing. And then you're like, okay, I don't want to do it. And you even have the options of going like, no, I don't want to do that. Why yeah. would I? And <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, then you do it though, however, and you find out this, this dude totally lied to me. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, this is not just about this treasure chest. There's deeper meaning to this thing. There's a whole new situation that arises from you doing this. So you can go back, confront the guy, and he he uh, he, he will deny the events. But then you press on, and uh, uh, eventually he'll he'll let his mask fall off. And essentially, you find out he's someone completely else than he right. told us initially that he would be. And the way this is explained, it fits within the world. And it, again, it. Uh, it enriches whatever is happening. It also teaches you another aspect of the world. Like, okay, mm -hmm. so there's people that do it like this, but I can kind of understand why they do it because there's war or whatever, right? right? And then you get presented with these choices. Like, all right, do you give him the? Do you give him back the chest? Do you keep it? Mm -hmm. Give it to someone else? Do you um, maybe? Uh, uh, there was a third choice. I forgot which one it was. <laughs> um, and all of these things will have their different consequences, and this guy will be either very thankful or not, and might even come back later in the game to, to show you his appreciation or lack thereof. Right. Of <laughs> I feel like everybody's been focusing so much on the butts in this game, uh, right? Yes. And so I was like, I, I, have to, I have to ask a butt right, question. I have to. Okay, I'll take a sip too. Of course. Butt questions. Okay. How many people are involved? in creating, like, the final product of a butt? I don't know, actually. I, I, I don't know if <laughs> we have guess? A, I don't know if we have a dedicated butt designer <laughs> or something. We have a guy who does the model. Mm. And then you have the guys that do the textures, right? And, the, and then there's someone else who does the, the skin shader for it so that it looks like skin. And uh, uh, ultimately, you have someone who has to animate it mm -hmm. with a different guy. So there's, is that five already, maybe? Like... Uh, model, texture, shader, uh, you have animator. So at least four people, I guess. And then there's probably coders who have to bring it into the game and make sure 
it literally runs. Right. <laughs> so uh, the the butt itself doesn't yeah, just yeah. fall through so, the world. Yeah, yeah. So basically, right. oh, may, and possibly I don't know. Maybe you have a concept for it. <laughs> <laughs> so so six, maybe six. Maybe six. Maybe six. Maybe six people possibly to more. make those butts. Yes, butt is a serious topic. Serious, <laughs> really serious business. And, uh, like, it's been coming up all over the place. Butts. I was like, I gotta have a butt question. <laughs> Say goodbye to everybody. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we got to drink coffee and right, talk and about game stuff. Go back to playing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What are you gonna do, bro? I don't know. You should, uh, just grab it. Can you put the helmet on? It smells kind of like an old Volvo in here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do the Is Guardian cool? the door? Did I do it? <laughs> yeah, you did it. super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I can't comment. <laughs> it's super cool. Legally. Look, it's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall over. Here, buddy. Here, here. Take that. Guard the vending machine. <laughs> cool. Uh, I wonder what's in here. I am being shown a cool thing by the devs. But I have to run there. It's like in a very secret place on the map. So they put down a custom map marker and I'm running to it right now. And it's gonna take me forever. Actually, I can call Roach. Roach, come help, come help a brother out. <laughs> that was super cool. Oh, did you find the part when we yeah. did the thing? Yeah, totally. On the internet? <laughs> <laughs>